When Cyclops became the Phoenix in Avengers vs. X-Men and killed Professor Xavier, while him and Emma Frost were fighting the Avengers and the X-Men at the same time, it was mind-blowing. Because the funny thing is that when the battle kicked off, Cyclops didn't even know what was going on. But it made sense that he killed Professor Xavier just because of everything that had happened. For those of you guys who aren't familiar with this era in Marvel Comics, you probably already know that the Scarlet Witch took away 98% of the mutant population's powers, right? That was the whole House of M event. What you got in Avengers vs. X-Men was the return of the Phoenix Force following that. But the last time the Phoenix Force was on Earth, you got the Dark Phoenix Saga with like Jean Grey, where she almost wiped out all of creation. So the Avengers panic, Iron Man tries to destroy the Phoenix and it splits into five pieces. Those pieces go to Colossus where he becomes the Phoenix, his sister Ileana, named with a Submariner who uses his power to destroy Wakanda, and then Cyclops and Emma Frost. But what's nuts about this is Cyclops has been steadily going insane ever since that happened. And that's why he says, how dare you, Charles? And Charles says, I'm not the one to argue and I'm not here to fight, I'm here to help. Admit you need it. And the response of Cyclops, the ego on you. I finally put the world the way it's supposed to be. I did it, me, and it kills you. Now, a lot of this also goes back to a story called Deadly Genesis, where Cyclops had learned that prior to him joining the X-Men, he actually had a brother he never knew about named Gabriel Summers, that Gabriel became part of a secret X-Men team that Xavier never told anybody about, and that that team was basically sent on a suicide mission. It was because of Xavier that Cyclops' long lost brother was killed. Between that and like the events of House of M, the fact that Xavier was nowhere to be found after House of M ended and it came down to Cyclops and Emma to get everything sorted out, Cyclops just basically lost faith in Xavier and his idea. But the other thing he did here with his power of the Phoenix and really with the Phoenix Five as they were called, they basically remade the world in a way that was more conducive to mutants, quote unquote, achieving Xavier's dream. But that's why Xavier says, you're so caught up in everything that's happening you don't even know the battle's already started. We're in your head. That's how far gone you are. Anybody who normally would have been of sound mind and had the Phoenix, they would have seen this coming a mile away. And that's when you find out it really is the full totality of the Avengers, the X-Men, all here. Magneto, Scarlet Witch, the Incredible Hulk, Red Hulk, the whole nine yards, Storm and everything. Now all these guys can do is take pot shots. That's the best they can do. And even Captain America says, keep the fight on Summers and Frost. Do not let up, not for a second. Keep it contained and focused. Keep them off game so Xavier can regain control and shut it down. They're there, or at least supposed to be, a kind of distraction. And that's why Xavier's constantly launching this telepathic attack. Because despite all the power that Cyclops has at his disposal, there's a difference between a person who is possessed by the Phoenix and a person who is in tune with the Phoenix Force. Having possession of the Phoenix Force is like me giving you a pencil. Being in tune with the Phoenix Force is John Wick killing guys in a bar with a pencil. That's the difference between these two things. So sure, Cyclops has the Phoenix, but he's not as powerful as he could be. And that's why Xavier's like, this needs to end, like stop. And that's why Cyclops is so easily succumbing to the power of Xavier. But the thing here is that Cyclops looks at it, just keeps getting angrier and angrier and angrier because he's like, how could you do this to us, Xavier? You betrayed your people. You betrayed all of us, right? We're literally going back on this whole idea. He says, you're forcing me to do something that I don't want to do. You're uniting the mutant population against me. And what am I gonna have to do? Destroy mutants. You're forcing my hand, right? Like you're making me do this. Even Emma Frost kind of makes the same argument. With Scarlet Witch and Oliver vaunted power, seemingly she's not able to hold her own against Emma. This is also kind of a, some finagling of sorts, but Emma simply says like, what's wrong with you mutants? We're doing this for you. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to the idea that like their hand is being forced and the world is being forced. But what they all realize that Cyclops and Emma don't understand is they're succumbing to the power of the Phoenix. They're turning into dark Phoenix variations. And that's one of the things to know. When a person becomes a host of the Phoenix Force, if they're not in complete 
complete and total understanding of their mind, body, and spirit, they will fall down, quote unquote, the dark path, right? That's exactly what happened. That's what happened with Jean Grey when she first attained the power of the Phoenix, but didn't fully understand what was going on. And then there was the shenanigans with Jamaica Bay and Jean Grey was not actually the Phoenix and whatever. But the bigger point that I'm making here is people can succumb to this. And literally what Cyclops says is he says, if you could have stopped me, you would have stopped me. There's nothing you can do here. And they can't. None of them can stand against the power of Cyclops. And so literally he says, last chance, Charles. And then he realizes Magneto's there. Now here's the big kicker. And this is why this is so important. Ever since the events of House of M, Magneto had kind of been on this path of turning over a new leaf and basically becoming a good guy. That's really all it was. And so even now with Cyclops falling down this road, yes, he is the Dark Phoenix. Yes, he is a villain. And yes, Magneto's becoming a good guy. It stays that way. This is how Cyclops became a bad guy in the comics, right? This is how he became a villain here. And so even when Cyclops goes to attack Magneto, the Scarlet Witch tries to save him, but it doesn't work. And so what you get is Hawkeye who fires an arrow off. Like even the power of Thor is not able to hold against the power of Cyclops, but an arrow comes flying out of nowhere. It hits Cyclops in the back of the neck and like it momentarily distracts him. And that's where he's like, you see that Xavier? They're trying to assassinate us. This is who you saw with. Iceman shows up. Now, here's a really important thing. Iceman's Omega level, right? That means he's one of the most powerful mutants in existence in Marvel Comics. And he says, not us, you. It's just you everybody is sick of. And so basically, everyone's saying, you're the bad guy, but he doesn't believe that he's the bad guy. And so where Xavier tries another telepathic attack, Cyclops is now lucid enough to rebuff it, to force Xavier out of his head. And then he says, I'm sorry, Emma. And he strips her portion of the Phoenix Force away. He literally just screws over the woman he loves and steals her power. And when that happens, he becomes the full on host of the Phoenix Force and becomes the Dark Phoenix. And in one of the most iconic moments ever, he just looks at Xavier and says, you are not my father. And Xavier like just screams, that's enough. And he's like, it is. And he just seizes Xavier and in front of the Avengers, the X-Men and God, he kills Xavier on the spot. Just boom, done. And like, that's how Xavier dies. And like the whole time he's crying. Like he's just like, why did you make me do this? Why couldn't you leave it alone? Like we were making the world better for the mutant population. You guys are the reason why he's dead. You have the Incredible Hulk who throws Wolverine at Cyclops with a fastball special. Cyclops incinerates him on the spot. And he's just like, is there no one else, right? He's like this. This is what Jean felt like. This is the power that she had. And that's when he fully allows himself to give in and he becomes the Dark Phoenix. He says, I am fire and life incarnate. Now and forever, I am Phoenix. Now Cyclops, with the power of the Phoenix Force, all of his military strategy come to bear, this guy is a hoss. The funny thing is it all comes down to Hope Summers to save the day. Now, for those of you guys who don't know about Hope Summers, she's one of the most powerful mutants in the history of Marvel Comics because she has the power to duplicate the abilities of anybody that she's around or even knows about, and there's no upper limit to it. But that's not the reason why she's so significant here. The reason why she's so important is because she's destined to be the new host of the Phoenix. And that all goes back to like the birth of Hope. She was the first mutant born after the events of House of M when all those powers were taken away. That's why you had stories of Marvel Comics called Messiah Complex, Messiah War, Second Coming, because it was the return of mutants as prophesized with the return or at least the birth of hope. And so it's like, she's the only one that can come out on top here. Now the important thing, right? Before that happens, Cyclops is the Dark Phoenix. This guy massacres everyone. And it's not even close. Bobby Drake, Red Hulk, these guys are taken out almost instantly. Gambit never had a chance in the first place. The Incredible Hulk is knocked across the world from Sydney, Australia to Sacramento, California. That's how hard this guy got hit. The fight transitions to Thor and Cyclops in the Himalayas. Thor gets blown into the atmosphere, right? He gets blown into space. And that's why everybody's like, take him down, right? Like Captain America's like, we have to bring him down. And now it's not just about, we have to incapacitate and defeat Cyclops. Now it's 
Kill him if you have to, right? That's where the fight is now. And that's why he's like, take him down. You would have a better chance stopping the sun from rising by throwing pebbles at it. The Phoenix is beyond your power. And it is. The Phoenix Force is incredibly powerful. And even when Wolverine attacks again, he says this world will burn. And from its ashes, a new world will rise. A brave new paradise forged in fire, but not for the likes of you. And these guys are literally just sent flying. And that's why he's like, prepare to burn Avengers. The age of the Phoenix begins now. And that's the truth about it is none of these guys could win. Not one single of these guys could come out on top. But then when Sam Alexander makes this just heroic, albeit completely foolish charge <laughs> at Cyclops, it's really more of a distraction than anything else. Because what happens is Scarlet Witch appears with Hope Summers. Because in the midst of him lashing out and just letting his power run away with him, Cyclops is met by what appears to be the visage of Jean. Now that's important because Jean Grey is the only person on the face of the planet that could talk Cyclops down, that could get him to stop, right? He could just be raging, screaming, killing the Avengers left and right, setting the X-Men on fire. Half the world could be engulfed in flame and Jean Grey could just appear and just say, Cyclops, stop. And it would all just end. It would all just cease right there. That would be it. That's how much of an influence Gene had over Cyclops, but it's not Gene. It is Hope Summers playing it smart. The funny thing about this is that when Hope Summers was originally introduced in Marvel, people thought it was the reincarnation of Gene, and Marvel kind of leaned into it. Of course, we know that it's not, but that was the feeling and that was the way that it was done. Because when Hope makes her appearance, she immediately just cold cocks this guy in that moment, right? Duplicates his power, cold cocks him, which is just enough to knock him unconscious. Now, it's also some enhancements that are offered by Scarlet Witch. It's not like she just walks up on Cyclops who has the power of a god and then punches him with a pair of brass knuckles and like, that's it, right? It's not really that simple, <laughs> right? Some amplification and whatnot is going on there. But the Phoenix ultimately abandons Cyclops. And when it does, it finally merges with Hope because that was the whole idea of Avengers versus X-Men. When the Phoenix was coming back, it was coming back to merge with Hope. That's why the fight between the Avengers and the X-Men even happened in the first place. Because the X-Men wanted to keep Hope, they wanted the Phoenix to return to Hope and for it to be the grand rebirth of the mutant population. The Avengers were afraid that Hope with the power of the Phoenix would go insane and kill everybody. The funny thing about this is that Hope with the power of the Phoenix she becomes the white phoenix of the crown. Now, for those of you guys who don't know what that means, there's a kind of hierarchy when it comes to hosts of the phoenix. There are people who are momentarily imbued with a portion of its power, like what you saw here in Avengers vs. X-Men, Namor, Colossus, Cyclops, Emma Frost, Ileana Rasputin. Then you have a host of the Phoenix, somebody who is just able to take the totality of its power onto itself. That's what Cyclops was. Then you have people who are in tune, who are like the perfect host for the Phoenix and just using the basis of its power. That's somebody like Rachel Summers from back in the day. And then the white Phoenix of the crown is the end result of what happens when a person is in perfect alignment with the Phoenix and is able to use the full totality of its power. When Hope becomes the White Phoenix, it terrifies the Avengers, but it also encourages them at the same time because she uses her abilities to start fixing everything. But make no mistake, have no illusions here. If she wanted to, this girl could snuff out the whole universe in the blink of an eye. Jean Grey did it in a what if story. What if Jean Grey had stayed the Dark Phoenix or something along those lines? She destroys the universe. The job of the Phoenix is to quote unquote, fix what's broken. It's this ridiculously ambiguous terminology offered by Marvel. But a Phoenix has the power to destroy a whole universe. And so that's why Captain America is like, nobody move, give her a moment. And she basically just kind of starts correcting everything, fixing everything. The cool thing here is the Phoenix does leave Hope Summers when she holds hands with Scarlet Witch and Scarlet Witch says no more Phoenix, it doesn't destroy the Phoenix Force. I guess it does momentarily, but the Phoenix Force does return as a kind of Phoenix egg later on in Marvel Comics, so it can be tapped into if need be. That happened during Secret Wars in 2015. It was pretty dope. But with the Phoenix Force effectively abandoning Hope, the last thing that happens here is these mutant signatures start popping up around the world. And that's what kind of signifies the return of the mutant population 
post House of M. As for Cyclops, this guy's basically tossed in a prison cell and he's just kind of there being, you know, interviewed or talked to or whatever by Captain America. He's got Ruby Quartz glasses on and that kind of thing, so he can't use his powers. But this is the beginning of Cyclops' villain arc. This is how he becomes a straight up bad guy. And it's amazing. Like, it's dope. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this to an end. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section, and I will catch you all later. Peace.